Your starters for the Terps for tonight. Left wing, Trevor Drake. Center, Matthew Kravitsky. Right wing, Max Noonan. With Brian Teske on left defense and Daniel Tomaszewski on right defense. Henry Peltier gets the start in net for Maryland. Thank you. 
You know, it's really good to be back on the call, Andrew. Oh, boy, is it, Matt. We welcome you to the Gardens Ice House in Laurel, Maryland, where the Terps are about to take on the Penn State Ice Lions for night number one of a back-to-back -back weekend series. My name is Matt Fusillo, joined by Andrew Rich and Benji Ferraro. Let's get going. It's been too long since the Terps have hit the ice. First game back from Thanksgiving break. It's been even longer for the Ice Lions, though. Their last game at the St. James for the ACC Showcase, they had a 5 nothing win over UNC Wilmington. That was on November 5th, almost a month ago. So a lot of time off the ice for the Ice Lions. And for the Terps, they're going to need to have, they're going to need to capitalize that on, on that and get a quick start. Get pucks in deep, play fast, try to get on the board first. Opening face-off, we are underway here at the Garden. Kravitsky wins it. Ice Lions wearing their white tops with blue pants. Very classic uniforms for all sports, most notably football. Gotta here. love the, the blue stripe down the helmet. It just it looks clean. It's nice. Off the boards behind Peltier. It was a good chance for the Ice Lions starting this game. They had a wraparound. Peltier was sprawled out with his left arm out. Don't know if the Ice Lions were able to get a clean shot off as the Terps come back the other way. Newdom tried making a move past Austin Lambert, but he was denied as the shot went around the boards. Now Drake shoots, and it's a save by the starting goaltender, John Seafarth. And speaking of the goaltender, let's get to the Penn State starters. Brendan Meyer, Nate Schumann, Will Arsenault. And Luke Raimundo with Austin Lambert, John Seaforth gets the nod in net number 30, the Pittsburgh native. You might like oh, that, Andrew. There we go. That's what we love to hear. For the Terps, who said that during the warm-ups, but it's Drake Kravitsky, Noonan with Teske and Tomaszewski on defense. Peltier in net. Ice lines coming into this game are 8-6. and six. They've had some big wins, though. I mentioned that win over Wilmington. They beat NC State as well. We're in a close one against UNC. This is a team that was ranked sixth in the newest Southeast rankings for the ACCHL. So it's going to be a tough test for the Terps tonight. Pass goes under Biganowski. And now shooting one was Riggle, but that deflects out of play. And the Ice Lions' next game after this weekend is against Liberty. I believe Liberty was in the top two or three in the rankings in the Southeast. Face off in the Maryland defensive zone. At the blue line now. 
That was MJ Atrando. Warner digs after it with Wilson. The Salsa line in full effect. Let's go. They're back. It only took one minute and 45 seconds to get that Salsa line term out. It wasn't even quick enough. Sandell for Warner. Terps having trouble getting it out, but now it's kept in again by the Ice Lions where it pops free. This is going to be controlled by Riggle and now punched off the boards by Atrondo. It's going to be icing. We'll take it back the other way. Riggle had his head up, just wasn't able to get to the red line as he dumped that one in. Good call there by the ref. And look who we have back out there. We got this fourth line back together. Lachlan Joyce coming back from injury with Luke Mohan. Dominic Facciano, the dog line, is back out there in full effect for the Terps. Joyce missed a lot of time this year with an upper body injury. Good to see him back in the lineup. He's been here for a couple weeks, but... Terps seem to always have a lot of injuries, at least since I've been with the team. Here's a giveaway. Getting bodied down to the ice was Facciano. Peltier tries to cover it. Still, it's loose. They fight for it. This is Egan jamming Peltier, and he gets the cover. Goodness, a lot of chances in front there for the Ice Lions. Terps weren't able to box out. Too many sticks in front. They need to clear those away and limit those second and third chances, so Peltier is able to cover. By the way, number 13, that was Liam Egan. Not to be confused with Liam Eden. They wow. are two different people. The Liam Eden that we know is still in Finland. He, <laughs> don't worry, he didn't transfer, so I don't think he would do that to us. Now playing the puck is Schumann for Kylie. This is Sebastian Kylie, number 20. From Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. The Ice Lions got a lot of out of state students. No surprise. Penn yeah. State. Compared to Maryland's a lot a lot of in state guys. Only a few from out of state. Travis Duchesne, Tucker Healy, to name a couple. I don't know if I can name any others. There's a few yeah, others. Uh Mohan. Mohan, Pennsylvania, yeah. Dishner, and Keski. That's it. Wow. This is Lambert for Schumann. Tries to get past Kravitsky. Now Teske looking for Noonan. Great feed there by Brian Teske on the backhand of Noonan. Noonan getting triple teamed. He'll take it himself into the corner. Tomaszewski fires. Save. That was a sneaky shot there from Chevy. He had a shot. He had a defender going right in front of the net. Tried to put it right past him. He couldn't do it. Looking for the breakaway pass for Cabral Downs, but it's going to be an icing. Peltier is from Gaithersburg, so he is uh, an in-state, an in-state fellow. Funny enough, our entire media team is out of state. At least the broadcast booth. There we go. Myself, Andrew, Benji, and Ethan were all. Teske at the blue line. That one just misses the mark. Tomaszewski and Teske reunited with that first pairing. That's going to be a key matchup to look out for against the Ice Lions. Two very solid defensemen, both locked down on defense, and they also can put the puck in the back of the net. One thing you do want to watch out for with both of them is both of them are very able and willing to move the puck off ice with their feet. But when they do that, you have to make sure, at least from a forward perspective, Someone comes back and covers their defensive responsibilities. Just over four and a half minutes gone here in the first period. Still 0-0. Wilson on the faceoff. He gets that back for Sandell. And now it's Sarah. Looking for Keski. Now it's Warner. Always know when Blake Warner's on the ice. 6-5. Just barreling out out there. Looking for Keski with Sarah, but it's taken back the other way by Meyer. Offside is waved off. Sarah plays it for Wilson, but it's turned over. Sarah 
Now Warner. Good look for the Terps. Sarah driving toward the net. Warner shoots, and that one goes high. Oh, you would love to see that one be on net. He had Sarah driving hard. He puts that low off the pad. Maybe look for a pass off the pads. Back come the ice lines now. Arsenault puts on the brakes. This is Sarah in the opposite corner. Plays the puck for Blake Warner. He'll take his time, probably get to the bench after this. Yes, he does. Very solid shift for Blake Warner, though. Maryland's top unit is back out. Drake, Kravitsky, and Noonan. Taking the puck is Cleary, number two in white. Nice play by Kravitsky to steal it. At the red line, it's Riggle. Now good, up ahead. This is Riggle again. Tries to get past Amen. now a shot. And I think Peltier got a piece of it. Now he's able to cover. It was Riggle and Cleary. But, man, we say Peltier's name. He, the last, he's been, he's always been good, but the last few weeks. I mean, I think about the NC State game. You I go think back about to the, the showcase. game. Oh, my God, he's been unstoppable recently. It, it, that NC State game really, I mean, I asked him after that game if that was his best game of his Maryland career. He said yes. The Ryder game, he he stole a win away from from a very, Ryder. A very good Ryder team, too. That was, was both very impressive wins that were huge for not only the rankings, but just over our, overall team morale. Ryder's currently ranked 11th in the Southeast region. The rankings were just updated on November the 26th. Good Look, D there by Sean Amon. That was McGuire looking to pass it across. I think he should have shot that. He had a good look, but a great play by Amen to break up the pass. As you said, Andrew, this is going to be icing on the Terps with 13-17 on the clock. Going back to those rankings, I'm looking at them now. A couple teams that Maryland has played on here. Penn State, as I mentioned, is at 6. North Carolina at 7, who Maryland lost to last weekend. NC State at 9. Ryder at 11. Rowan at 16, and Delaware at 18. Virginia Tech also on there at 15, with Wilmington, too, at 12. Yeah, so Wilmington. A bunch of teams that the Terps have seen. They've gotten a couple wins on that, on some of those teams, and this is going to be a huge weekend for the Terps in terms of rankings. It's going to be another icing. This one's on the ice lines. Yeah, UNC Wilmington, they've been they've been much improved this year from last year. I, I remember going there last year. The Terps played two games in Wilmington. Maryland... Lost the first game in overtime. That was the day of the flaming bus. So, yeah. you you know, everyone's minds were out. I don't want to speculate, yeah. but <laughs> it was a close game. And then the second game, the Terps won pretty handedly, if I remember correctly. It might have been 5 2, yeah. 5 3. Well, uh, we called several Wilmington games at the showcase, and they were really impressive to watch. Saw an overtime win. They beat Ryder. They beat Ryder. That was an exciting game. A lot of really good teams in the showcase. A lot of good teams in the ACC. I mean, they got a lot of representation. Here's another giveaway. It was Joyce who got that on net, but Seaforth stood his crease. It was a bit of a dangerous rebound there. Left it right in front. I think it was Mohan driving towards the net. He was able to be swept away right before he got there. An open net to shoot at. Nice play. To break that up, I think it was Tomaszewski denying Egan. This is Duchesne in the offensive zone. Pops free. Now Healy. Duchesne has to come back into the neutral zone to negate the offside. Healy tries to get a shot. Saved by Seafarth. Duchesne on the other side. Goes, oh, oh my God. That hit the ref in the head? He might have hit his helmet. Oh, my God. He seems to be okay. <laughs> he just shook his head. <laughs> He's good. Shake it off. There's a shot, point blank saved by Peltier. Couldn't quite make out the number. I think it was Connolly, number 26. It's been a very back and forth start. Terps have had the better of the chances so far in the second part of the period. Buganowski, skitters one wide. This is Healy on the puck. Referee makes an interesting hand gesture. I don't know what that was, but we play on. Maybe the puck caused some damage. <laughs> Punched at by Connolly, and it's going to be another icing. If you're Coach Carter in the Terps, you're going to be very pleased with this start. A couple good chances. 
would like to know what the shots are right now. I'm not sure, but yeah, unfortunately, we will not have that stat for you tonight here on the Logsden rink. There is 11-12 left in the first period. We're going to have to save the clock a lot. Yep. Unfortunately, we don't have any of the stream graphics as we usually do. It's just a matter of being in the logs and rank does not work. Simply. It was it was a choice between stream graphics and uh, camera quality that was watchable. Yeah, so, to pick one or the other, we yeah. thought that you'd rather watch the game than yeah. see the score. We'll keep you updated as much as possible. The good news is tomorrow we're back on the Patrick rank. Oh my God. And we have not been on the Patrick rink since literally the opening weekend. I cannot wait to be back. My cry tears of joy. I think I will. <laughs> Majority of the rest of the games for the Terps year are at home. They weren't at home at all in November. Uh, we were on the road. It felt like every weekend last month. So it's good for the Terps to be back on home ice. See if they can get a win here against the Ice Lions. Will this be icing? No, it will not be. We play on. Just over 10 minutes left in the first. We remain tied at zero. But it's Raymundo. Now a pass for Meyer. Arsenal to Peltier with the stick out. He's able to get a glove on it, so we'll, we'll have a whistle. Terps have got a, done a good job in the last couple minutes of limiting any chances for the Ice Lions in the middle of the ice keeping everything to the outside, and anything that does get towards the middle, Peltier is able to swallow up and cover. So good defense so far from the Terps. Kravitsky and Cleary on the draw. Terps are able to get it to center ice, where it's handled by Schumann. Looking ahead for Cleary, but Amon's able to take the puck for the Terps. Now Drake up ahead for Noonan. He gets past Lambert, puts on the brakes. Now he's at the blue line. Pass across for Amen. Now it's Kravitsky. See the patience from Noonan when he just entered the zone. Took his time. He made a little button hook stop. Now look out here. Here come the ice lines. It's a three on one. Zemanski. And the net comes off. He wasn't able to get a shot on Peltier. Peltier's right skate hit the post. So we have a stoppage. Lucky break there for the Terps. Yeah, you, you, you mentioned it. They did have a three on one. He had two other players coming with him. Decided to just drive towards the net. He did have that open lane. Tried to go to the backhand. It just rolled off his stick. Terps will take that any day. We remain tied at zero. 9.35 on the clock. Now, that that really is technically a perk of the ACHA. When you play in ranks like these, when the net comes off so easily. Yep. Not saying that goalies should do that on purpose. I'm sure a lot of them hey, do. If, <laughs> if you can make it part of the strategy without making it too obvious... But, I mean, we there are some ranks that we go to, the Garden included, where the net just comes off I mean, 10 times a game. Think about how many – at the showcase, think about how many oh, times it happened. And that's a nice rink, too. Yeah, that's a beautiful rink. I mean, with all the games we called that weekend, we must have seen that 10, 12 times the net came off. I know Ryder's another rink. I know, remember the Ryder broadcast crew was talking about that. Off the face-off, that was Duchesne shooting. He's able to get a rebound. Off the initial attempt, now swiping at it. Biganowski shoots, and a blocker saved by Seafarth. Going to call a hand pass. Oh, a good look for the Terps. Quick shot off the stick of Biganowski. It's a hand pass. I don't know what the ACC rules are, but usually you're not allowed. There shouldn't be, or there isn't a hand pass in the defensive zone. But the faceoff stayed. So if it was a hand pass on the Terps, you would have think maybe I don't know. The maybe faceoff would have come out to neutralize. Maybe that's a. It might be a different rule in this league. But you think they made a, a wrong call and then realized? <sighs> it's I don't know. possible. I don't know. Strange. Teske. Now Duchesne. Cleary. Duchesne into the offensive zone. Biganowski was almost able to take that away, but now this is Lambert. It's going to be a whistle here. Was that offside? Offside, yeah. Quick shout out to Penn State head coach Chris Cunningham. Uh, Mr. Cunningham's son and I played youth hockey together growing up, and I ran into him tonight at the rink, and it was extremely random. There you go. And yeah, big shout out to Coach Cunningham. 
And one of the great things about hockey is that it's such a big family. It is a big family for it. It's so true. I mean, once even if even if you're not a player, just being in the hockey environment. I mean, there's all, a lot of connections. There is all the families you meet and all the people you play with and the coaches and even the refs. Remember a ref I had growing up was also a teacher at our middle school. So that was funny. Always seeing him on the ice. It, it really is a family, as you mentioned. That. Remember, I went to high school with the Virginia Tech goalie. You played with the Virginia Tech defenseman. Yep. A lot of connections. Then you get to come back and see people again, like the Ryder crew. I know. And, I mean, I haven't seen Coach Cunningham. It's been almost probably 10 years, so really cool to see him tonight. Did you know he was the coach? At Penn State? I had no idea. I walked <laughs> out of the bathroom and saw him. I was like, oh, my God, that's Mr. Cunningham. There you go. So I saw random. you talking the whole yeah. way. I was like, yes. he probably knows that guy. So random. <laughs> Here's MacDonald. Egan. Back on their own end for the ice lines. It's Cabral Downs. Terps are all over the ice lines right now. Intercepting passes, getting in lanes. It's good work right now from the Terps. And there's going to be a whistle here. Like you said, a lot of back and forth hockey. Well, as we mentioned at the start, ice lines haven't played a game in almost a month, which is in the middle of a season, a month off is a long time. You really have to get your stride back. I'm sure they've been practicing, obviously, but... And also, this is worth noting. So the last three games that Penn State played were at the ACC Showcase, which I guess you could call a neutral site. Yeah. The last time they had a full-on away game, the first game of the season on September 15th, that was their only away game Are all you year. serious? Every single game after that was home, and then the three ACC games. Oh, my goodness. I have a theory about that. I might be completely wrong. Let's hear. I think it's because of the Penn State varsity team. That's very possible. They want to get all their home games in early because they want to be on the nice rank. I, I could know, be completely they were playing, wrong. The Penn State, uh, the D1 team was playing tonight. I believe they were playing Minnesota. So I could be completely wrong. We, we went there two years ago. Well, if you look, I'm looking at Penn State's schedule for the rest of the year. So this weekend, obviously, they're here at Maryland. Next weekend, they go at Liberty. Then they go at Ryder, at Rowan, and then at Delaware to finish off the year. So they're on a road streak. That's a lot of travel. That's a lot of traveling. And then the ACC playoffs in Winston-Salem. Playing the puck is Noonan for Sandell. Yeah, maybe my... My prediction, my hypothesis is completely wrong. I have no idea. I but mean, it makes sense. No? It's definitely worth noting. They've had one true away game. And the Penn State varsity team went down to Minnesota 4-1 to one tonight. Minnesota was ranked 6th. Penn State ranked 18th. So it was obviously a big game in State College. At the Pagula Ice Arena, too. We, when we went there two years ago, it was... So they have their obviously their main rank that everybody knows the one that's pretty much an NHL rank, and then in the back of the building there's another sheet of ice kind of like this, uh, and we thought we were on the back rank, but then we were kind of bummed because we wanted to be obviously on the cool one, and then it turned out that we were on the cool one. So that's awesome. I can't. Hopefully we go there next year. I would love to get a chance to call a game in that arena. This is Sandell. Now, Noonan was really cool being at Pagula. Great rank. Probably seats. Um, it's got a seat like 8,000, right? I mean, yeah. probably more. 10,000? I've never been there. I'm not sure, but it's got to be as nice as an NHL rank for sure. They have multiple bowls. They have a lower bowl. Here's Heal shooting, and he scores! Tucker Healy breaks the ice. one nothing Maryland. Looked like a bit of miscommunication there from the ice lines behind their own net. Puck came right in front. Looked like Seaforth didn't know quite where the puck was. Came right to the stick of Tucker Healy. And he goes high glove. And the Terps are on top with 5.52 remaining in the first. That's Tucker's 11th goal of the year. Talk about players that have been hot. He is one of them. 
absolutely. He's played unbelievable this season. Five and a half minutes to go in the first. Healy, his 25th point in his 20th game. He's known for winning the faceoffs and generating those offensive plays, but when you need a guy to put the puck in the back of the net that's not named Max Newham, he can do it. He does it all. And he's not the biggest guy on the ice, coming in at 5'8", but he knows how to use his size to his advantage and not put himself in situations that can be dangerous, obviously. Duchesne in center ice. He'll whistle one in. Goes off the top of the boards. The Maryland scratches are standing behind Seafarth. Oh my goodness, what a save by Peltier. That was Szymanski again. His second somewhat breakaway look, if you want to call it that. All He's had plenty of scoring chances tonight, and Peltier. The extension. Oh, my goodness. Almost went full split there and made the save with the left pad as the net came off. Unbelievable from the people's goalie. The line, linesman uh, sprays some water down on the ice, trying to solidify that post a little bit more. Yeah, it's not going to work. There's a penalty. It's going to be against the ice lines. Sean Amon drew it. It's a hooking call. Definitely the correct call there by the ref. So the Terps will head to the power play for the first time on the night. It's going to be Cleary going to the box. So first power play look of the night for either team goes to Maryland with 428 on the clock in the first. This Terps power play has been... I'd say a little inconsistent this year, but they've had moments. I remember against uh, Delaware when we went to Delaware, I believe the power play had four or five goals in one game. So a lot of striking power on this power play. Ice Lions are able to get the clear. Teske pressured by Connolly. Now it's Drake. Power plays Noonan, Tomaszewski, Drake, Teske, and Healy. Unfortunate bounce there for the Terps. That puck hit the boards along the rim of the boards down in the corner, and it bounced right to the middle of the ice, and the ice lines were able to clear. Here comes Trevor Drake now. Drake into the offensive zone. Weaving towards Seafarth, and a nice blocker save again. Wow, that would have been beautiful. What a move there by Trevor Drake, and able to change the angle on that, on that shot and drag it back into his body, and good blocker save there by Seafarth. Yeah, it's got to be a tough shot to get off, too. He has all the momentum going to the right and is able to get that blocker side. With a defender right in front of him. It's a tough shot. Here's Noonan shrieking down the left side. Tried to get past McDonald. Duchesne at the blue line. Taken away by the Ice Lions. The ice, ice Lions, they had a bit of a break there if they were able to handle that cleanly. Terps get it back. There's the captain, Schumann. Passed by Healy, gets through to, to Seafarth. He'll stick it aside. This is skated by Kylie, kept in by Noonan. He makes a move, tries to get past Schumann, shot through traffic, and Seafarth is able to track it. Good job there by Noonan to keep that puck in at the point. It was very close. The ref had a good angle of it, though. He was able to get a shot on net. Good save by Seafarth. So 25 seconds left on the power play. The entire second unit's out now. Wanner, Biganowski, Duchesne, who was there before, and Sarah and Sandell. An errant pass by Sarah, taken by Riggle. Look out here. You got two ice lines behind the play. Here's Wanner. It's a three on two. Biganowski, now Duchesne, his shot. Didn't get all of it. Great defense there by Riggle to get back and get stick on puck. Power play time is up. Riggle, uh, Cleary, excuse me, back onto the ice. Under two and a half minutes left in the first. Here's Riggle for Cleary. Cleary was one of the players 
going into tonight that we knew gets a lot of ice time. He's going to be all over the ice. There's a centering feed. Goes off Cleary's skate. And it's ladled out by Warner. He'll get to the bench. Icing is waved off. Taken by Fort. Under two minutes to go in the first period. Maryland leads 1-0 thanks to Tucker Healy. Glad you could join us on the Maryland Hockey Network. Where it's our first game back from Thanksgiving break. This is Fort. Gets tied up with Newnham, but not until Atrondo takes the puck near the red line. Passing it out was Connolly, but Amen will get it down to Newnham. Here comes Max, his shot off the glove of Seafarth. I believe that caught some of his mask, too. He's shaking it off right now. Look out. Here's Connolly. Pass across, shooting. That one goes high. Oh, is Cabral Downs with the absolute missile of a shot. He did get all of that one. Just missed the net. Under a minute to go. Puck taps off the glass. Fabiani tries to dig it free. Great play there by Jacob Fabiani. Standing up at the blue line, not letting anything get past him. McDonald. Now in the corner, it's short. Short is not short, by the way. He's 6'2". <laughs> Good call. <laughs> Connolly is denied. Now Drake. 20 seconds left. Healy with Tomaszewski. Under 10 seconds to go. See if the Terps can beat the buzzer here. Healy trying to get it toward the front. One second, and that will do it. Great period from the Terps. They're able to put one on the scoreboard. They were able to limit the ice line's chances as much as possible. Peltier came up big a couple times, and the Terps will head to the locker room with a lead. Just one goal and one penalty. It's Healy, the goal scorer. And we will step aside here on the Maryland Hockey Network. Hopefully there will be no hot mics because no intermission graphics for you tonight. Shout out Brandon Appleton, by the way. Shout out. Great job with the Shout music. Shout out the whole team over there. Anna, Esther, Rob. They all do a great job. It's the whole crew. All right, let's step aside. Let's we will it. be back for the second period.
Back for the second period. Maryland leads 1-0 and we're underway. Tucker Healy breaks the ice for the Terps' 11th goal of the season. Just one goal and one penalty in that opening period. That's not very common in the ACHA. Matt, you and I were talking about it in the intermission. One of the better periods we've seen the Terps play all year. We'll see what they can do here in the second. There's a shot by Noonan that goes high. Puck is taken away by the Ice Lion captain, Schumann. There's a feed and they score! Alec Riggle right in the slot. And just like that, the game is tied at one. I was just about to say, the only thing you could criticize in that first period for the Terps were the odd man rushes. They give up another one right there. Comes to Riggle in the high slot. He goes low there on Peltier. Goes five hole. Just slides it right along the ice. And we are tied less than a minute in to the second period. Yeah, your predictions have really been – you're like Tony Romo oh, this year. I appreciate that. Man. I guess I'm Jim Dance then. I'll take that. <laughs> yeah. Nothing wrong with that. This is McDonald. Now short. Do you watch a lot of NFL? I do. Who, what what announcer do you like? Um, I think, you know, Ian Eagle? Yes. I think his voice is unbelievable. And obviously, from a color commentator perspective, I think Tony Romo is one of the better ones. So, yeah. huge compliment there. I appreciate it. Yeah, I love – I don't know. I mean, Al Michaels is obviously one of the best ever. Yeah, he is. I, I like the Romo-Nance crew a lot. I, do. I, I think they're both really good. Jim Nance, it's hard to go wrong. He's just – one of the best to ever do it. Maybe the best to ever do it. Besides Mike Emmerich. Kenny Albert. Yeah. Inside the glass. <laughs> it's so good. He's doing a book signing in New York City soon. Are you serious? I might have to go. Dude. Get go. to meet the one and only. Oh, my God. A Bosch. Turns the puck over. Now this is Ramundo. Shooting from the blue line that was short. Went off the, the skate, I believe, of Wilson. Now Warner. Salsa line for the Terps. Playing defense here. Goes off of Sandell as he gets tied up with Meyer. Ice Lions are able to keep it in. Pass down low. Shooting one just high. Oh, that was Raimundo. This is not a great shift here from the Terps. They got caught running around a little bit in their defensive zone. Led to a couple chances for Penn State. Now they're able to get a change. For the Ice Lions, this is short. Raimundo again. Fabiani playing the puck for Mohan. Backhands one in. Amen shot saved by Seafarth. Now it's good for McGuire. Getting tied up was Joyce. But now this is McGuire again. And for Penn State, this is a dream start to the period. After that first period that you had, a little, they looked a little bit slow. Couldn't get their legs under them. You come out in the second period, score 30 seconds in, and now you're all over the Terps. So good start here for Penn State. Shot is blocked Ooh. up high by Mohan. Oh, he's shaken up with that one. Good block there by Luke Mohan. Looks to be all right, though. 
It's a gutsy block. Puck takes a weird bounce off the board. Centering feed. Rebound. Peltier's got it. Oh, the puck looked that's like it was going to slide around the corner. Then it popped. It's the second time that's happened. That's happened. It happened a, uh, a little bit earlier in the first period. That puck bounced right to the middle of the ice off that board. So it's something you have to watch for. You can't really fix it. So you just have to know it's there and, and be wary of it. Almost led to a goal there for Penn State. Teske tried to get it out, but that was a shot by Kneisner. Peltier was able to make the save. Now this is Noonan. He's got Tomaszewski with him. Terps are outnumbered. Noonan will shoot, but that's blocked. It was Lambert getting the body in front. Another try by Maryland, but Seafarth is there for the cover. It was good defense there by Lambert. Noonan tried to drag and shoot that one in the middle of the ice. Lambert just stayed right in front of him. Didn't get caught puck watching. Was able to block that shot. Textbook. Tom Kaczewski. Noonan was right there near the crease. Now he takes it over. There's a shot by Kravitsky, and he scores. Terps regain the lead. 2-1. Is that his first back from injury? Matthew Kravitsky on the board. Noonan with the takeaway behind the net. Kravitsky with great positioning in front, able to win the stick battle. Noonan finds him with the feed, and he buries it. And the Terps get the lead right back. Just over four minutes into the second period. 2-1 Terps. That's the first Makrovitsky goal in a long time. Love to see it. Obviously, he was battling that shoulder injury earlier in the year. Missed a bunch of games. Really an emotional, a vocal, a physical leader on this team. And he gets his team back on top in this one. Yeah, he initially got that injury on the Dayton trip, which was the second week of the season. Missed a good chunk of time. Maryland's without a lot of players. Nathaniel Dishner, James Body, who tore his ACL, hasn't played at all this year, hasn't played since February, I believe. He will be back. The, both of them will be back, uh, Body and um, Dishner, the first weekend of the spring semester, it looks like. So again, there's another hand pass, and they're going to keep the face off in the defensive zone, it looks like. So th there must be a different rule here in college than in the NHL. Because in the NHL, there is no such thing as a hand pass in the defensive zone. And Penn State's able to get it right out. It's Zemanski driving toward Peltier, and he makes the save. Referee blows the whistle. I don't think they know where it is. It's it got, in, yeah, it's in his equipment. Caught in his equipment. Now it comes out. Great speed there from Zemanski down that right side. Absolutely flying. Peltier with a good save. How many times have we said that recently? <laughs> a lot. Peltier will stick this one aside. Sarah looking for Keski. This is Raimundo. Keski gets it out, batted out of midair by Warner. Delivering a check on Fort was Warner now. Just so much force coming in on that hit. Sarah. This is Arsenal. It's a two on one. He's got Meyer with him. His shot goes to the other side. Now four at the blue line. That one wide again. Played behind by Atrondo. Wanner's able to flick it off the glass. And Keski's on the chase. Keski still with the puck. Nice play to buy some time for his teammates. Look out. This is Noonan. Got to look out. Kravitsky, the goal scorer, gets a shot off, but Seafarth is able to cover. So a little bit of sloppy defensive zone play there from Penn State. Turns right over to Max Noonan, and that is not the guy you want to turn it over to. A couple big saves there by Seafarth, though. So we remain at 2-1, to 13-46, remaining here in the second period. 
Kravitsky's goal, by the way, was his third of the year. Playing in his seventh game. Big leader for the Terps, serving as the co-president right now and alternate captain. Newham, his shot. Couldn't get through. Kravitsky was in the slot. Still, the Terps keep it in. This is Kravitsky again, and a save by Seafarth. This line is all over Penn State right now. Now it's Schumann for the Ice Lions. Penn State captain. Couldn't get that one to go on net. Schumann's able to keep it in now. Pulling it across. He's looking for Connolly. That was a centering feed. Oh, did he miss that? I think it just rolled up on his stick. Couldn't get a clean shot off. That Maybe. was McGuire. Happened so fast. It did happen very fast. Ooh, a little bit of pushing and shoving after the whistle. Fabiani went back after. Was that, that was Connolly? McGuire. McGuire. Yeah, might he received that centering feed. He might just not have been strong enough on that bottom hand. It flipped up on him. Couldn't get a shot on that. Peltier looked like he was going to be there, though. It was flying across the crease. <laughs> Mohan and Kylie on the faceoff. Now it's Tomaszewski. He'll get it out. This might be icing. Seafarth is going to have to cover. It's on goal. Lucky for the Terps. They'll get an offensive zone faceoff out of it. The Penn State broadcasters just gave us a shout out. So, you know what? Let's return the favor. Hey, shout can. out the Penn State broadcasters. There's two of them making the trip down here. You know, they 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 uh give us some credit, we'll give them some credit. Absolutely. Always work together. You have to respect the dedication. They're willing to make the trip down here to call this game and the game tomorrow. So, shout out shout out them for sure. Short Plays it in for the Ice Lions. Now Tomaszewski for Teske. 12 minutes left in the second. Maryland on top, 2-1, to one, thanks to Kravitsky. Seafarth's going to cover this one. As we've been talking about the rankings, Penn State currently ranked 6th in the Southeast region. Boy, getting a win this weekend will be absolutely huge for the Terps in the ranking. They sit 20 right now. I believe they're just outside that top 20. But we know how much goes into, or what the, the formula is for the rankings is a lot of it is strength of schedule. So if the Terps are able to win this game, obviously with a team of this strength, it would be huge for them. The team ranked ahead of Maryland. Their current record, they've played 19 games. You want to guess how many wins they have? Can I guess three? You're correct. As that one goes off the post. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that was Cleary. Back the other way for Beganowski, but it's too far out of reach. Seafarth will play it. But, yes, you were correct, Andrew. Three, they're 3-14-2. Three, and two. Yeah. It's... The Bearcats. Which, as we said. Oh my goodness, what a deflection there. That almost worked. Chipping one again was Cleary. He's all over the ice right now. But as we said, strength of schedule, it's not a concrete number. There's a few uh, decimal. I think it's 90 point something something percent strength of schedule that goes into the rankings. It's in the 90s. I mean, so in other words, there's going to be no penalty on this play. I'm not in charge of the rankings, but I'll have my opinion. I'll keep it to myself. <laughs> <laughs> you really have to wonder. I, they do have a bunch of factors that go into it in, I, in addition to strength of schedule, but how do you think any of it is subjective? 
I because I mean it. Has, some of it has to be subjective because there it is possible that teams have very similar schedules and have very similar records. But I, strength of schedule has to matter for sure. But ninety percent of the equation, I don't know. And it's not an exact number. You, it would make sense if you say, okay, it, this is exactly what it is. I can't even name it for you because it's rounded to shot by one or saved by Seafarth to some random hundredth. So, yeah. I don't know. It's interesting, but that's how it goes. So the Terps are going to have to work with it. But this this weekend is huge for them in terms of the rankings. I'm not making a case for her. By the way, who should be higher or lower on the rankings? I just think we just think it's really the way it's cal- the way it's calculated is maybe a little flawed, but it is really interesting following the rankings. It is cool, seeing yeah. Who jumps up? Who falls down? Depending on who teams play. I mean, last year Maryland's record was incredible, but the strength of schedule was not. Well, we were by the end of the season they were ranked. 13, 14, around there. Well, the funny thing about that. So, this is Abosh with the puck. He'll play it ahead for Kravitsky. The funny thing about that is the top two teams get an automatic bid to nationals. So, they're exempt from regionals. And then after that, 3 through 12 will play each other regular standard seeding in addition to the four auto bids, which is 13, 14, 15, and 16. Maryland, since they lost to Ryder in the Mott Championship, they couldn't get the auto bid. And instead, they finished one spot out from a regional berth. Jeez. Do you know how close that was? How close? That's less, crazy. Less than four one hundredths of one point. That is insane. They missed out in regionals. That is absolutely insane. So they finished one spot behind, um, I think it was University of Pennsylvania, who got the very last spot before the auto bids. And Maryland missed out by less than four one hundredths of one point. Crazy. I believe you said the top two teams get that auto bid to nationals. I believe currently that is Florida Gulf Coast at one and then Indiana yep. at two. Turfs don't play either of those teams this year. The funny thing about last year is that Ryder, since they won the match, they were able to go to regionals. Maryland was ranked higher than Ryder. As there's a feed across and they score. Alec Connolly ties the game again. It's 2-2. Two to two. Oh, my goodness. What a passing play by Penn State. A couple of drop passes. Again, it's an, it's an odd man rush. Terps have given up just a few too many of those, and this time it bites them, but not to discount the incredible passing there by Penn State, and it was Connolly who was able to finish the feed, and we're tied at two. Less than eight minutes to go in the second period. I peeked over at the Penn State broadcasters right after that goal. They were very excited. to Get into it. That was a beautiful goal. To provide a conclusion to our conversation just now about the rankings from last year, as Peltier sticks one into the corner, Maryland was ranked higher than Ryder, but since Ryder won the Monarch Championship, they got that auto bid, and they lost to who else but Penn State in the regional tournament at the St. James. It's going to be a penalty here against the Terps. It's going to be a hook against Fabiani, it looks like. Yeah, it's going to be Fabiani, who will sit for two. Penn State with their first power play look of the night with 7.21 on the clock. Arsenault. Now Schumann. Here's Meyer in the paint, and Peltier is able to get a glove on it. Another great feed there from below the goal line. That time was was Keeley. Found Meyer right in the slot. He found a little bit of soft space. 
in coverage. And a great save by Peltier. Arsenal and Mohan on the faceoff again. A drive. That was Cleary. Peltier, another save. You know, he is so good at making the save, but also not allowing the rebound. That's a huge part of it. Rebound control is so crucial for goalies. And Henry Peltier is very good at it. Not allowing those second and third chances really helps. Down to the blue line. Schumann for Meyer. Down low. It's Arsenal. Peltier gets the glove on it again. Still 134 for the Penn State power play. Got plenty of time, but Maryland will take as many stoppages as they could get. Give me three steps. There's a pass by Arsenal. Might have tipped off the glove of Peltier. Ooh, Esther got out of the way just in time. Oh, my goodness. Gets a little laugh. So does Rob Raymer. <laughs> hey, the camera people are in the, in the firing zone over there. Yeah, it really is the war zone. Hey, whatever you got to do for the shot, and they do it. Shout out to Esther and Rob, by the way. They've been great all year. They're awesome. It all started with Media Day. Oh, that was so cool. Puck comes into the neutral zone. This is Healy trying to get off to the races, but Cleary is there first. Tomaszewski. That one gets chipped out of play. It hit the netting. Terps gave up a couple couple too many chances there right in front of Peltier on that power play. Still a minute remaining. Have to box out better right in front. Clear sticks. Push people away from Peltier. Allow him to see the shot. Through traffic. Oh, that was off the stick of good. Again, a person right in front of Peltier. He could not see that shot. Great save there. Winding up again was good. And Peltier, as you said, make the, makes another save. Now down low. This is good again at the blue line. His pass for McDonald and getting the clear was Maryland. That's a great stick by Tucker Healy to get a little piece of wood on that pass. And deflect it right to Max Noonan and he cleared it. 25 seconds for the Ice Lions. Looking to get, the, get themselves their first lead of the night. Trying to make a move around Teske was Connolly. Now down for good, that was blocked. Teske and the Terps get a clear. Huge clear there by Brian Teske. Down to five seconds now on the power play. Fabiani up in the box. And he'll end, or he'll enter the ice now and get off him for a change. So Terps are one for one on the penalty kill tonight. Teske, this will be... No, no it will not be icing. We play on. This is Kneisner. Wilson gets checked by the opposing number 13. That's Egan. Under five minutes to go here in the second period. Score is two to two. Wilson for Duchesne. Maryland goals, Healy and Kravitsky. Penn State, Riggle and Connolly. Shooting one was Egan. Peltier will stick it aside. Now it's Drake. Played for Beganowski. Terps had a chance, but Kravitsky now comes in. Beganowski will go to the bench. Newnham's on. This is Sandell. Oh, he passed it across. And there's a shot by Newnham. I heard some posts there. I did too. I think Sandell should have shot that. I, I know. He had a lane there. He tried to find Newnham. It was a good pass, but would have liked to see him taking that one to the net. And Seafarth is going to cover this one with 4.03 on the clock. So another chance for Newnham and the Terps. As it grazed the left post. And this top line for the Terps has been all over the ice tonight, making defensive plays, scoring goals. Now they have an offensive zone draw here. Just four minutes to go in the period. Kravitsky and Cleary. 
This is a look for the Ice Lions. Sandell, nice play to keep the puck to the outside. Great D there by Sandell. Newham lost an edge there, went right into the goalie. Everyone seems to be all right. Newham and Seafarth both get up. And the Maryland top line will go to the bench. So it'll be Wilson going up against Cleary. Wilson has been good on the faceoffs tonight. Chase Wilson's made a couple good plays. Just a little bit earlier, chipped that one around the defenseman on the left side of the ice. Went in on a two-on-one. Good looks there from number 13 in black. Cleary batting the puck. There's a shot by Sandell on the blocker side. And it stays out. Skating it the other way. It's Zemanski. He has Cleary to his left. Good stick there by Andre Serra to break up that two-on-one. Another odd man rush for Penn State, though. It's too many in this period. Too many. It's really been the Achilles heel the whole season, I would say. It has been. Look back to the Millersville series. As Pelsey is able to cover that one. It is tough because this Maryland D cord loves to jump up in the play, and that can be a good thing. But you have to make sure if you're going to jump up the play, you better have a forward coming back to cover those defensive responsibilities. And sometimes it happens a little too quick. The forward can't get back or they don't realize where the defenseman is. And that's how two-on-ones and three-on-twos can form. So it's just it's tough to it's tough to handle those, but you really have to if you want to win games, especially in this league with all the talent. Arsenal. Now taken by Facciano. The dog line with a... Ooh, that one what just went wide. Didn't miss by much. Lachlan Joy supplies the pressure. Now Mohan trying to keep it in. Here come the Ice Lions. Fabiani. Just over two minutes left in the second period. This is short. Now Amen. Amen playing the puck for Healy, but McDonald passes it for short. No penalty there. Penn State bench wanted to trip right in the middle of the ice. You really sense the pace started starting to slow down a little bit. Yeah. It got a little high tense, high tense for the Terps there. Try to calm things down a little bit, get things back in their control. Yeah. Pace has definitely slowed. There's been more goals in the second period than the first. First goal, first period is just one goal. But now we sit at two to two. Two seasons ago, the Terps played Penn State a back-to-back -back at Pagula Ice Arena. The first night, the Terps lost 9-1. And then the second night, they lost 4-1. This is revenge tonight. Here comes Beeks. Here is Beganowski moving in on Seafarth. And it goes right into the chest of Seafarth. He'll make the save for the whistle. It's a tough shot for a lefty coming down that right side, trying to get enough on it with the defender right next to him. Good job getting that shot off. Just wasn't able to get enough on it to get it over that right shoulder of Seafarth. It was a good save. Drake trying to pop it free. Oh Jumping up was Noonan. Looked like a basketball oh tip-off. Goodness. Teske a shot. Oh, an open net. But luckily for the Ice Lions, it's Lambert that was there first. Now McGuire. He shoots. That one goes wide. Lambert again. And Peltier with the save with 49.7 on the clock. Top unit for the Terps will stay out there. And now Coach Cunningham and, the, and Penn State will be able to get a chance and get that matchup they want. Peltier again. 
46.4 on the clock. Kravitsky and Kylie will do another faceoff. Kravitsky gets this one. Tomaszewski with it. Circles around the net. This is going to be a penalty. Absolutely. Yeah, you knew right away. Absolutely. As soon as, as soon as the ref sees that free hand from the defender come around the body anywhere of the player with the puck, it's a pretty easy call. And it's going to be Kylie who sits for two. 38 left in the second period. Another power play look for the Terps. By the way, the power play has been really good this it year. It has been. It really has been. When they're on, they're on. Healy, Newnham, Tomaszewski, Drake, and Teske. As Newnham's shot is de deflected out of play. 33 on the clock. Yeah, Newnham saw a little bit of daylight there over the glove of Seaforth. Leave skate. It was number four, Brendan Meyer. Got a piece of it with the skate and deflected it up and out of play. Look out. Teske hustles back. There's a shot save. It was Meyer. Another timely save by Peltier. That's a huge one right there. If you give up a shorthanded goal going into the intermission, that kills all your momentum. Back comes Newnham now. Newnham in with speed, and he scores! It's a power play goal with eight seconds on the clock. 3-2 Terps. How quickly can the tides turn? Not 15 seconds before, it was the Ice Lions who came in on a break, shorthanded. Peltier with a huge save. Max Newton comes back the other way, walks into the slot, rips one over the glove of Seaparth, and the Terps take that lead back with just less than nine seconds to go in this second period. What a huge turn of events for the Terrapins. And you go back to that save by Peltier. I mean, that makes that whole play happen. One second, and that will do it for the second period. Max Newnham, his 23rd goal of the year. Are you kidding me, Max? With oh eight goodness. seconds on the clock in the second period. And the Terps will go to the locker room with another lead. This time it's 3-2. to two. It's another really solid period for the Terps. Still want to see them clean up those odd man rushes, but you can't complain going to the locker room with a lead. So we'll step aside here on the Maryland Hockey Network as Newnham smiles getting off the ice. And we'll be back for the third period here on the Maryland Hockey Network. Guys, 
soft flat shoes. You ladies are smaller. You're not keeping shots, are Thank you. 
Start of the third period. The score is three to two, Terps. Matthew Sillo and Andrew Rich with Benji Ferraro here. Maryland and Penn State. Your Terps goals, who else but Healy, Kravitsky, and Newnham. And this is the one, this is the period that decides it all. It's been a close game so far. Terps have the lead. See if they can maintain it and keep the pressure on throughout this period. Pelty is going to cover this one just 18 seconds in. Well, on the on the Patrick rink, it was Montgomery College versus UMBC. I talked to Matt Kravitsky's dad just now, who obviously has a son on the Maryland team playing, but also has a son playing for the Montgomery College team, and they just won 6-4. So, awesome. And we know Matthew Kravitsky was a huge part of getting that team started. At, at he, was he was the, the founding father. Yeah. So huge congrats to Matt Kravitsky. I was going to say that actually last period when we were talking about how Kravitsky is a big leader on this team. He started another team before he came to Maryland. And he, I mean, it, he explained it to us on the New Jersey trip. It really sounded like it was his idea. He made it happen. Obviously, he had people that helped him, but that's a huge task to take on. And to have that team still exist and still be playing and, and winning games now, I mean, that's awesome. So, huge shout-out to Matt Kravitsky. Cleary on the face-off. Now Schumann. Behind Peltier's throne. This is Cleary. Down to Schumann. His shot. Couldn't get through. That hit Sarah. Now Sandell. Yeah, it hit him right in the skate. He's limping a little bit right now. There's a drive, and it grazes off the post. Oh, my goodness. Cleary. Now Kylie. Kept in by Schumann. Sticks out of play by Peltier. Goodness gracious. Couple close calls there for the Terps. One off the post. One off of Andre Sarah's skate right in front. I'm out unscathed, though. We'll have to deal with this defensive zone draw now. Schumann. Pass for Meyer. Now it's Kylie. Now Schumann. His shot. Peltier makes the save. Meyer back for Schumann. Pass goes off the boards, kept in, keeping it in, excuse me, with Meyer. Trying to get it out was Facciano. There's a shot. That one hit the post, too. Another post. This one couldn't get through. Peltier sprawls down. Puck goes off the side of the net. Now it's Arsenal down to the blue line. It's Schumann. Now Cleary. What big block, block by Newnham. Max Newnham getting down to a knee for that one. And this one heads into the Maryland bench. Goodness, so many chances there for the Penn State Ice Lions. They can't put it behind Henry Peltier, though. We remain 3-2. to two. 32 seconds left on that power play. See Coach Carter duck there? Yeah, everyone ducked on the and bench. Coach Childs? Literally everyone Every ducked. single person. Maryland's able to get a clear. Coach Joe just gave a big sigh on the bench, <laughs> leaned back and looked up to the heavens. That's got to be a stressful little section of hockey there for a coach. Your team's hemmed in their own end. Just Pelte being fired on and fired on. But as he's done all year, he's remained calm and made the saves when he's needed to. And that results in the penalty kill. Teske comes out of the box. Amen. Now Kneisner tried getting past Kravitsky. 
Playing the puck right in front of us is McDonald. Wanner uses his body to keep them to the outside. Pass across. Now down low. Centering feed. Kravitsky is able to scoop it out. Wilson didn't know where it was. It's punched right back in by Short. Max Newton is playing defense right now. You have Eamon and Newton with Kravitsky, Warner, and Beganowski. Oh my God, it's in. I didn't even see what happened. I'm looking at the replay right now. I believe Max Newton just passed it off of the Penn State player and right behind Henry Peltier. Oh my goodness. I believe it hit off the shin pad. Do we know who scored? Oh my goodness. Matt can't even speak right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm writing down that Teske penalty, but Oh my! I don't, I don't know, know what how to that say. went. I I didn't see it. It. I believe Newton was trying to make a stretch pass from behind his own net, and a Penn State player just happened to be skating right in front of him as he passed it, and it hit something and got behind Peltier. You don't see that too often, but nonetheless, we are tied, and that's a deflating one to give off. For the Ice Lions now, patrolling at the blue line was Atrando. Now it's Eamon. Big hit there. Sean Eamon hits the ice hard. Gets right back up. He's going to make a play now. Now Healy. Backhanded in by the Ice Lions. This is going to be Fabiani on it. Here's Lambert. Now trying to dance to the front was Connolly. He'll play the puck now below the goal line. Just under five minutes in. Ice Lions tying the game for the third time. I think Newton scored a goal for both teams. I, I'm still shocked. I don't know. Facciano with the puck. He tried looking for Joyce, but it went off of Cabral Downs. Right near Peltier, and the puck stays out. Turf need to calm things down right now. They're getting caught running around out there. Mohan just taps it in. He'll get to the bench. Here's Kravitsky all by himself. Great job buying time. Newton back on the ice. Newton makes a move. Gets to the front. He's denied. Now it's Drake and on Seaforth. Kravitsky shooting and it doesn't go. It went over the net. Oh my goodness. Well, you could tell Newton is frustrated. He's going to want to get one back more than ever. Kept in by Kravitsky. Another nice play by number 11. Newnham was offside, so they're going to have to wait. Now this is Raimundo. Moving in. That was Meyer, his shot. Saved by Pelsier. The Ice Lions with the pressure again. From the blue line, they score. 
It's short, and the Ice Lions have their first lead of the night. Just too much offensive zone pressure for Penn State. Terps weren't able to handle it. That time it's a shot from the point with traffic in front. Defense Defensively couldn't box out. And it finds its way past Pelletier. And the Ice Lions have their first lead of the night now. And it's 4-3. It's crazy how quick a game can turn around. Just five minutes ago, it was 3-2 Terps. A bad bounce ties the game. And now you're... Now you're down a goal with 13 minutes to go, so the end of this game is it's going to be a test here for the Terps. Here's McDonald, taken by Abosh. Ice Lions are able to keep it in right in the line. That one's got to get out. It's Arsenal. His shot, blocker saved by Peltier. Now Warner. Terps are chasing the puck around right now. This is not good. It's Raimundo. Now Arsenal, Peltier, trying to get the glove on it, but now it's, I think that was Eamon. Yes, it was. He's able to get it out. This will be icing on, Terp, on, the, on the Terps. Excuse me. Can't get any words out. <laughs> 12-12 on the clock. You would wonder how the next, depending on how the next five or so minutes go, if Coach Carter chooses to use his timeout or not, try and calm his team down a little bit. 12-12 currently on the clock. Only a one-goal game. See what happens in the next few minutes, though. So. Terps just can't seem to get the puck out of their own end right now. It's good a shot, and Peltier with a glove save, a good save he's doing on every, good. He's doing everything he can. Wow, great call there, man. Good, short. Good. Good. Penn State is a guy named Evan Partridge. I wish he was playing tonight because it's Christmas season. Yeah, there you go. Could have made a joke there. Egan, not Eden. Peltier will make another save. This is where I would love to know what the shots are. You have to think that Penn State is on top. I mean, after the last after the last five to seven minutes, you would think. But the Terps really controlled the play in the first period. I don't know. It would be interesting to see. Egan. I think Egan's jersey is a different color. It, it, yeah, there's like a cream color. There is something slightly off. I will. I have noticed that. Tomaszewski. Now it's Egan. Kylie. Now Egan. He was looking for the centering feed, but it's good at the blue line. Egan's there, but Healy beats him to it. Ice Lions still able to keep it in, but it pops out to the red line. For good. Right now, this is just the Terps battling the storm. They have had so many chances against. They just haven't been able to get a clean exit. And there's another one. They just turn it over right at the blue line. Egan gets tangled with Tomaszewski. Teske for Healy. Goodness. They just, they're really struggling to get it out of their own end right now. Here's a stretch pass. Here's Duchesne. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. He's denied by Schumann. Duchesne with the puck again. He shoots. And a glove save by Seafarth. Behind the net is Schumann. This is Riggle. Now Kravitsky off his skate to Nuna. Moving on Seafarth. And he makes the save. Oh, Hits Seafarth and goes out of play. Newton saw a little bit of daylight there over the right shoulder of Seafarth. Tried to go high blocker. I think Seafarth got a piece of it. Knocked it up and out of play. You could just tell Newton wanted one there. Yeah, he's going to want that badly. Absolutely. 
10-14 on the clock remaining here in the third period. Sandell for Drake. No Newnham shot. Easy save for Seafarth. Another bad giveaway by the Terps. Here's McGuire. Sandell was back to cover. Good job there by Alex Sandell getting back. Lambert, now Kravitsky. Another interesting bounce off the boards. It's really had an impact. Those boards down there in the corner have caused some trouble for both teams. It's just save after save from Henry Peltier right now, trying to keep his team in this game. It's Connolly, now Drake. Here comes Newnham again. He's all by himself as Maryland's caught in a change. His shot misses. Now it's Joyce. Lambert. That was Mohan. Kept in by Amen. Newnham in all alone. Makes a move. Scores! Newnham ties the game. It's 4 4, and we have some shoving. Are you kidding me? What a play by Sean Amon to keep the puck in the zone. Found Newnham standing all by himself in front of the net. It's a deke to the left. It's a deke to the right. And he goes five hole between Seaford, Seaforth, excuse me. And we have a tie game once again. Oh, my. We just knew Max Newnham was going to get back on the board. We had some pushing and shoving after the goal. See if any disciplinary action comes out of it. 8.57 on the clock. And it's Max Newnham for a 24th time this year. Let's we'll see if he could get another one. So it looks like the Terps are going to have a power play here. It's an ice line in the box. And we're playing five on four. So not only do the Terps get a goal, now they go a man up. It looks like it's Lambert in the box. I believe. Yes, it is. I believe so. Austin Lambert. Another power play chance for the Terps. Newnham scored on the power play with eight seconds left in the second. It's a massive opportunity for the Terps. They turn it over. Healy tries to get it out. Good offensive pressure by the Ice Lions here, shorthanded. Drake will play it back. Newnham behind the net again. Uh-oh. He'll hand this one to <laughs> Drake. Good. He knew better that time. <laughs> Usually don't see Newnham behind the net. I don't. It looks like they switched up their zone exit on the power play a little bit. So I wonder if they worked on that in practice maybe. Really nice play there by Short as Healy was about to wind up for the shot. Short was able to poke it off the stick of Healy. Now it's Teske behind the Maryland bench. Beganowski on the ice. Newnham stays on. So it is Drake. So Beganowski replaces Healy. Now Sarah replaces Teske. Slowly but surely, Maryland gets the second unit onto the ice, and the Ice Lions get a clear. We'll see if Newnham stays on with 33 seconds on the power play. Looks like he will. Drake stays on as well, at least right now. Now Drake goes off. Duchesne is on. Newnham was looking for Beganowski. Ice Lions are able to get a clear. Newnham still on the left side waiting for that breakout pass. Duchesne gets it to him. He's checked by Good. Five seconds left in the Terps power play. Lambert ready to exit, and that'll do it. We're back to full strength. It's going to be an icing against Penn State there, so the Terps will get an offensive zone draw out of this. See what line they go with. The home team always gets that last change if they want it. Coach Carter elects to go with that fourth line. Mohan, Facciano, and Joyce. Sarah and Sandell back on deep. Yeah. 
Sandell at the red line. Good. Behind his own goalie, Seafarth. Kneisner is able to get it out. Sarah, who has Egan trailing right behind him. Sarah still with the puck. Puck comes out. Ice Lions had to wait due to the delayed offside. Now regaining the zone was Kneisner. Here is Schumann. Gets toward a good shooting angle, but Peltier will make a save. That was a tricky shot there by Schumann. It was a quick release. Winding up was Lambert, and Peltier makes the save up high. Schumann at the blue line. That puck trickles wide. Under six minutes to go in regulation, we have a 4-4 four four hockey game. Noonan with two goals. After that Maryland own goal, he gets one back. Healy tried to pickpocket Lambert. Unbelievable read there by Tucker Healy. Just wasn't able to corral it. Now it's Amen. Amen taking the puck. Nice line players down. That was Schumann. No penalty on the play. We play on. Amen for Beganowski, but the puck goes off out of reach. And now it's Lambert back the other way. Playing the puck for Raimundo. Now Meyer. Duchesne is there. His pass for the captain, Beganowski. Now Healy. Ice Lions into the neutral zone. Duchesne will chop it right back in. Under five minutes to go in the third. Amen, right in front of us. Wilson will apply the pressure as the Terps get a change. Newdom back on the ice. Going to keep an eye out on him. See what number 19 does. As Meyer plays it around the boards. This is Arsenal. Getting it out with Maryland. Warner will apply the pressure on Short. Short gets there first. Warner takes it away. He shoots and a glove save by Seafarth. So once again, the pace kind of slows down a little bit here in the third period. Terps will definitely take that. They'll get an offensive zone draw. It's Newton with Wilson and Warner. We'll have another face-off. Maryland wins this one. Newnham shooting. It's redirected. Fort. Now Noonan, and this is going to be a penalty. It should be on the Ice Lions. Now it's going to go against the Terps, it looks like. They may be taking them both. So Riggle is going to the box, and Wanner is too. Yeah, you're right, Andrew. Not sure what the call was. Penn State fan is talking to us as if we're not broadcasting. <laughs> Did you hear that, Andrew? <laughs> I heard it. <laughs> <laughs> so they're going to take them both, and it's going to be four on four hockey. With 3.43 on the clock. Going to have some open ice to work with. For Maryland, it's Tomaszewski, Teske, Healy, and Duchesne. Delayed offside. 
Sandell is on the ice. Maryland has three. Oh, excuse me, Tomaszewski goes off. So Duchesne, his shoot. Andrew, I can't get any words out right now. <laughs> his shot is saved by Seaforth. Come it's on, right. let's get it together. Sorry, right. we've all been there, man. You remember at the end of the showcase when we just couldn't speak <laughs> after 10, 11 games? 12 games yeah. in three days. That was a great weekend. It was. Healy wins the faceoff for Sarah. Now Healy again. Sarah a drive, his shot covered by Seafar. 3.07 on the clock. Don't get to see Andre Sarah shoot the puck too often. But what he does, he's able to use that big body and get a lot of power on that shot. That one was a one timer from the left half wall and absolutely ripped it. But Seafar is able to make a good save and cover. No rebound. Sarah is 6'4, 200 pounds. So he's able to get a lot of force. Yep. Is it going to be icing on the Terps? Andy Kravitsky is now watching. Showered up after the win. And now watching his brother. Good crowd here tonight, might I add. Absolutely. Have to imagine tomorrow will be similar. I would hope so. Back on the Patrick drink. Kylie. Here's Noonan. Noonan will play it around. Nobody was there. Under three minutes to go here in the third. We're still tied at four. Good speed there by Kylie down that left side, but Trevor Drake with the defensive play. Back on the Terps. Here's Noonan. Terps are onside. Noonan makes a move. Shooting. Score! It's a hat trick! And the Terps go on top, 5-4. Are you kidding me, Max Noonan? Oh, my goodness. With a stare down to the Penn State bench after. I got goosebumps. What oh, a... you were just waiting for it to happen. Noonan, after giving up an own goal, he scores number two and three on the night, puts Maryland on top, 5-4, and it's a hat trick for number 19. If you could have predicted, I mean, I feel like we did predict that he was going to score again. I mean, all over the ice. And it's a wrister from the slot, absolutely wires it past Seaforth. And the Terps get that lead back. And now... All eyes will be on Seaforth and net. We'll see if Coach Cunningham pulls the goaltender. We've reached the two-minute mark here in the third. Riggle and Warner are still in the box for 10 seconds. This is Tomaszewski over the red line. Seaforth will glove it, and he'll hold. This is key for the Terps. You want as much offensive zone time as possible. Prevent the Ice Lions from getting the extra attacker. This is a huge face-off. If you're able to win this draw and get some sustained zone pressure, able to keep Seaforth in the net for as long as possible and prevent the ice lines from going up a man, it's going to be a huge draw, and it's Tucker Healy. You would want no one else in the draw for the Terps. And, and there's going to be a timeout. Leave Coach Cunningham and the Ice Lions called that time out. Yeah, it was Coach Cunningham. I think they're about to drop the puck, and Cunningham was yeah. a little. So both teams will talk things over, get the right personnel out there. I would imagine Coach Carter will stick with that line he had, obviously with Tucker Healy taking that face off. What do you think? Uh, what do you think, Coach Coach Smith is saying on the bench right now? I mean, if you're able to win this draw. You want to keep things down low. You don't want to let things come back out high. And just in case, you want to keep that one man in the high slot, just in case anything does come back towards the Terps end. But ideally, you want to work things down low, below the goal line, work the cycle in the corners, and try and just keep pressure. I'm sure Coach Smith added a couple extra words in there, too. Yeah. 
Let's go, boys. Let's see it. So 143 on the clock. Arguably the most important moment of the season so far is right here. This is Duchesne. What a face-off win by Tucker Healy. You can count on him to always do it. Now the ice lines have possession. We'll keep an eye on Seafarth. Right, he doesn't move a muscle. He's looking at the bench. Coach Cunningham looks back at Seafarth. Oh, he's got to go. Now the Terps take it. I thought Seafarth should have gone there for sure, but... Beganowski, the first one there. That's big. Coach Cunningham looks on. Ice Lions have possession. And we've reached the one-minute mark. Seafarth, and they're going to call him off. There he goes. Extra attacker comes on. It's a six on five. Down the length of the ice by Duchesne. It's tipped. It shouldn't be icing. It goes off Meyer. I think Meyer just saved the goal there. That one looked good from Duchesne. 45 seconds. Kravitsky applies the pressure. Schumann. Backhanded. Off the glass. Peltier will cover. No, he will not cover. Newnham. Now Tomaszewski. 30 seconds. Net is empty. Down the length of the ice, Tomaszewski, this is going to go wide. And it's going to be icing on the Terps. 22.5 on the clock. I wonder if Coach Carter calls a timeout here. Doesn't look like he's going to. He's talking with Coach Brennan. Yep, now And he's now he's going to call it. Good call, Andrew. Like I said, Tony Romo. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. That's a smart... Yeah, absolutely. Good call from Coach Carter. Get their players some rest. They won't be able to make the change. Yeah, that's that's huge. With that icing, you know your players can't get off. Give them 30 seconds here. Get a drink of water. They know what they need to do. A huge moment of the turf season right here. So 22.5 on the clock. Come with the hat trick. And Maryland will do anything they can to come out of this one in the win column. Huddles are over. Players back to the face-off dot. It is to the right of Peltier, who looks magnificent all night. It's moments like this. This is what your season's all about. Healy is able to get the face off. It's Connolly down to the blue line, pass across. Ten seconds left, trying to swat it was Tomaszewski. Peltier behind the net to the last five seconds. Getting out of the zone, and that will do it. The Maryland Terrapins defeat the Penn State Ice Lions 5-4. Put it in the books. Put it in the books. You said it, Matt. What an unbelievable game. Arguably the best 60-minute effort we've seen from this team all year. And that is an absolutely massive win over a highly ranked team like Penn State. Oh, the boys are going to be happy about this one. They're going to wait for Peltier to go to the front of the handshake line. Deservedly so. Goalie always goes first as he shakes hands with Seafarth. This was a really good back and forth game. Both teams with great chances. Some beautiful goals we saw. Capped off by the Newnham hat trick. Terps come out on top, 5-4. Let's go, Chase. What a win. And Wilson went off the ice. They're going to call him back on. <laughs> nice little stick salute there. Love to As see they it. do after every win. It's good to have that back. 
Now some of the players and coaches shake hands with the officials. Well, Maryland back in action again tomorrow night with Penn State. We'll be on the Patrick rink. Again, that'll be at 920, just like tonight. But what a monstrous win tonight for the huge. Terps. Absolutely huge. And we talked about the rankings so much. And a win like that is going to do absolute numbers for the Terps in the rankings. So it'll be exciting to see where they end up next week. Look at this crowd behind us. Oh, my goodness. Quite the crowd indeed. Well, that'll do it for us here tonight from the Gardens Ice House for Benji Ferraro, Andrew Rich, our entire Maryland hockey crew. My name is Matt Fusillo. So long, everyone. Let's go, baby.